students to attend meetings and classes virtually for the time being. Um, some upcoming competitions. On February 4th, uh, we have our final black and white and pictorial competition. The deadline to enter that is uh, January 26th, which is this coming Wednesday at 9 o'clock. On February 11th, we have a B competition, and that will be a print competition. We've converted all of the other print competitions to digital uh, for now, but that one competition will be a print competition. And so the uh, prints are uh, due in the night of the competition, no later than, say, 725 on February 11th. On February 25th, we have a photojournalism night, and the deadline for that is uh, February 22nd. And again, that's a digital competition. Some upcoming speakers. N uh, next week, we have a members-only Zoom session uh, with Frank T. Smith, and he'll be talking about architecture and the art of graphic elements. And again, as I mentioned before, the clubhouse will not be open for that Zoom presentation. So you will receive a link uh, probably on January 26th. Uh, winter classes have begun. Uh, on Wednesdays, we have Fundamentals of Photography, Saturdays, Photoshop Editing, and Monday nights. Uh, we were scheduled to start Intermediate Photoshop last Monday, and uh, due to Mother Nature and her uh, consistent snow, we uh, postponed the first class, so the first class for that will be um, this coming Monday. Okay, uh, registration for those is pretty much closed. Uh, we will begin registration for spring classes uh, probably in early February. So if you're interested in a class, um, you know, think about registering for the spring. Um, in the spring, instead of intermediate Photoshop, we will be doing Lightroom. Um, so we will do fundamentals of photography, Photoshop editing, and Lightroom. Uh, a word about the Mansfield Reformatory Brook Book Project. Um, we have worked with some people in the Mansfield Reformatory. Uh, they're putting together a book of photos from the Reformatory. Um, and it, you are now able to enter your photos into Shutterscore. I want to remind people that this is for current members only. Each member can submit up to five photos. We ask you to keep the original images sized at a minimum of 8 by 10 at 300 DPI. So we need a high quality photo if your image gets selected. Um, but when you submit your uh, photo, we want you to resize your submission to meet shutter score requirements. And that is no longer than 1280 pixels on the longest side. And the uh, shutter score will be open for submissions until February 15. And at that time, we'll turn over the entries to the people at Mansfield, and uh, they'll decide on which photos they want uh, in the book. And then those that are selected will be notified. OK, so again, we want uh, to invite you to watch this and many uh, of our Friday evening meetings at your convenience on the CPS YouTube channel. There is a link on the CPS website homepage, or you can open YouTube and search for Cleave Photographic. We do invite you to subscribe to our channel, and then you'll be notified whenever a new video is posted. So again, welcome tonight. Uh, we have a small audience in the club, but hopefully we have a number of people watching from home. Uh, this is our third and final nature competition for the 2021-2022 year. Tonight we have 94 images total, 51 in the nature category and 43 in the pictorial category. So let me introduce our judges for the evening. Uh, Debbie DiCarlo um, is a member uh, and uh, she, uh, her photographic journey began at a young age with the Kodak uh, Instamatic camera that used film cartridges and flash cubes. I can remember those days. Uh, today, her gear includes a Canon 5D Mark IV. She specializes in photographing landscapes and waterscapes, wildlife and macro. She's best known for Howling Lesson, a photo of an adult coyote and two pups 
uh, and for winning popular pho photography magazine's annual reader photo contest in 2013. She founded uh, a group called Focus on Photography Tours and Workshops, and she leads uh, photography tours and workshops throughout the United States. So tonight, who will be reading for, who's going to read for Debbie? Uh, Bill Keaton will be reading Debbie's comments. Uh, our next judge is Lynn Radica. Uh, he has traveled and photographed the American landscape since the late 1960s. He had his early work critiqued and encouraged by four of his inspirational models, Ansel Adams, Wynn Bullock, Henry Gilpin, and Al Weber. In the early 1990s, he had five distinguished full-color books published. One of his recent projects includes the printing of the photographs for the black and white book, Master of Light, Ansel Adams and His Influences. Um, Radika, the American West calendar, featured many of his finest black and white landscapes and details of the American West. His work and technical writings have appeared in a variety of publications, and his photographs have been published as fine art duotone posters for Arches, Canyonlands, Capitol Reef, Death Valley, Grand Canyon, and Zion National Parks. He's published uh, numerous technical articles in major magazines, including the book Contrast Masking Kit. His original prints can be found in several private, corporate, and museum co collections, as well as galleries and internet sites. And if you want to find out more about uh, or see his work and information about Lynn, you can find it on his website, www.radicaphotography.com. And reading for Lynn will be Stephanie Keaton. Okay. And our final judge tonight is Mari Kalai. She has been an artist for the past 10 years. She was born and raised in Romania and lived abroad in Italy, the United States, and South Korea. She has been traveling the world, exploring different cultures, and that's what inspires her the most. She holds a certificate in photography from the New York Institute of Photography. She's an international award-winning photographer and an avid painter with her most recent exhibitions in Seoul, South Korea and the Washington DC area. Her mixed media work is sublime and marked by a nostalgic realism. Her first book, Adagio, is a black and white book about childhood. Her latest uh, self-published book, Door, is a visual journey about longing. Mari's work can be seen at her website www.maricolai.com and I will be reading uh, Mari's comments and it always amazes me when I read these bios from the judges the quality of the judges that we get is is amazing uh, for those that are um, not familiar with our judging criteria uh, let me just repeat it each judge scores an image on a scale of five to nine the final score for each image is the total of all three judges' scores. Images are judged on three criteria, impact, composition, and technique. So those are our announcements. So let's get started with the, uh, the nature images. Debbie says, good timing catching these birds in what looks like a heated squabble. The entire scene looks to be nicely focused and the white part of the birds are exposed properly. To make the image stronger, the photographer might want to crop in a bit from all sides so the birds are more prominent and stand out from the surroundings. The image is entitled Albatross Parting, uh, Parting Ritual by Belinda Prince, 21 points. Lynn says very nice colors, contrast, and lighting. I like how the vertical shaft of light is off center, but would prefer it to be diagonal, which might require shooting at a different time of day. Overall, a difficult subject handled nicely. The image is by Susan Bestel, entitled Antelope Canyon, 21 points. Mari says, great composition. I would not change anything about this photo. But for the sake of it, I would probably add a little more contrast to highlight the eye as the center point of the photograph. 
Uh, the image is called Beaver by Mary Kay Tallarico, 26 points, second place. This is a very serene image, Debbie says. The clouds are so pretty with the rim lighting on the top edges. This shoreline at the bottom of the image in the top one-fourth of the sky doesn't contain any detail and could be cropped without loss of overall impact. The image is entitled Bethany Beach Sunrise by Fran Marino, 21 points. Lynn says the color scheme is very nice and I like how the cloud patterns duplicate the cactus patterns. I would eliminate the empty foreground dirt as much as possible by stepping closer to the cactus. The image is entitled Big Bend in Spring by Richard Schneider, 21 points. Mari says, good contrast, especially of the clouds that allow the birds to stand out. A little more distance between the birds' wings would have made this image much stronger. The image is called Birds Fly by Maria Diaconu, 20 points. Debbie says, what a beautiful autumn scene. The blur of the water punctuated by the red leaves is very pleasing to the eye. The diagonal composition leads the eye throughout the entire scene, taking in the nuances of the rock and the pop of moss on the left side. I find the bright yellow background above the falls to be distracting, though. If the photographer would have only included the tiniest sliver or eliminated, eliminated it altogether, or even brought the brightness down in post, it would have been a very strong image. The image is called Blue Hen Falls by Eric Wethington. 23 points, honorable mention. Lynn says, very nice. The moth or butterfly is in sharp focus, making it the center of attention. I also like the overall warm color scheme. This is done well, although a bit cliche. The image is called Brown Moth by Marge Brady. 24 points, honorable mention. Mari says, beautiful composition, contrast, and feeling. Even if the two drops were not there, this would have been a great image, but the two drops add a certain feeling of fragility, yet resilience of the nature. The image is called Canna Leaf Curls by Vicki Wirt, 25 points, third place. Debbie says, this is an interesting viewpoint of a turtle. The colors and patterns are really amazing. Thank you, photographer, for sharing something many probably have never seen. The beak is nice and sharp, and it is exposed well. The animal is illuminated with the background going dark, which is very pleasing. Is the turtle in water? I can't tell, and that alone keeps me intrigued. The image is called Coming Up for Air by Joe DiStefano. 22 points. Lynn says, perfect reflection and nice timing for the sunset. I might like to see the subject offset to the left and the sunset not centered. The image is cliche, but nicely done and a good exposure. The image is called Egret Sunrise by Lonnie Dittrick. 24 points, honorable mention. Mari says, very good composition with the subject not centered. Great lighting as well. I would increase the contrast on the frog just a bit and darken the rock so the eyes would travel faster to the frog. But overall, this is a great image. The image is called Frog on a Rock by Vicki Wirt, 22 points. Beautiful scenery with those low puffy clouds, Debbie said. The sky is intensely blue, making me wonder if the photographer used a circular polarizer or they pumped up the saturation in post. In any case, it seems a tad unnatural to my eye. Sometimes less is more when it comes to saturation. The interesting textures, colors, lines, and shapes sure keep the eye moving throughout the image, discovering all the lovely details. The image is called Grand Junction Valley by Gary Merrick, 21 points. 
In Lynn's apparent opinion, it doesn't get much better than this. The bear is sharp and stands out perfectly against the soft focus background. You can see all four legs and he is turning to look into the frame instead of out of it. I couldn't improve on this except I would try to clone out the tiny bright top left corner. The image is called Grizzly Shore Lunch by Keith Marchand. Uh, 25 points, third place. Mari says, good lighting. As far as composition, I would have left more space under the bird's feet. And if the lens allowed, use a smaller f-stop to separate the bird from the ba background. The image is called Heron at Beaver Marsh by Ron Werman. 20 points. Lovely image of the male mallard duck, Debbie says. Good amount of space in front of the duck for it to move into, and great timing, too, as the leaves are nicely placed. The calm water perfectly reflects the duck and the leaves, too. A very tiny knit on this image. It could benefit from a tighter crop from the top because there isn't a lot of interest up there, and by doing so, the main subject wouldn't be quite as centered. The image is called Hinkley Duck by Eric Wethington, 20 points. From Lynn, nice complimentary colors, green and red magenta, nicely framed and good focus. If there's one element that distracts from the image, it's the leaf that blends into the bird's beak. The image is called A Hummingbird by Donna Schneider. 23 points, honorable mention. Mari says, great composition and lighting overall. I would burn in Lightroom or Photoshop the edges of the image to highlight the eyes. I would also burn a little bit the small portion of the nose. Great photograph. The image is called Lemur by Dave Saborik. 23 points, honorable mention. Debbie says, a very pretty scene. The composition is extremely pleasing with the sand on the left being offset by the large boulder on the right. The plunge pool is gorgeous teal color that changes to sand color in the foreground. Technically, a very sound image with good visual impact. The image is called Lower Falls, Hocking Hills by Bob Kowaleski, 19 points. Lynn comments, nice juxtaposition of clouds and ground details. The image has somewhat of a handheld snapshot look. Try to look for a better angle if possible or zoom into the center area a little cropping out the blank bright areas on the left and the lower right. The image is called Mammoth Hot Spring by Maria Diakonu, 18 points. This photo has a good feeling. However, it looks too busy for me, Mari says. It's a hard photo to make because of so much movement. If possible, I would crop it in a way that no half bird is at the edge of the photo, like in the top right. This way the eye travels easier throughout the image. I would also increase the contrast a little bit, especially on the birds in the water. The image is called Merwin Street Gulls by Gary Merrick, 19 points. Debbie says a striking view of a milkweed pod with a gorgeous sunny background. Great choice of aperture in order to keep the seed pod and the seeds tack sharp while letting the background blur so beautifully. Great composition, too. The image is called Milkweed by Joseph Miko, 21 points. From Lynn, very nice lighting, perfect timing. I would try and prevent the dead branches from reaching into the sky, if possible, just two small spots. Perhaps step back a foot or two, then zoom in slightly, if that's possible. The image is called Morning Light by Jane, Jane Sidney, 19 points. Mari says, great composition. I would increase the contrast and maybe burn the edges a little bit to make the hawk 
even more standing out. Great capture of a beautiful bird. The image is called Osprey in the Ready by Bob Koaleski, 22 points. Wow, great capture of this raptor, Debbie says. The photographer caught the intensity of the eye, which is tack sharp. The exposure is spot on. Great aperture choice. The entire bird seems to be in focus. The slight blur of the wingtip could be followed by some, but it indicates movement, and that is a huge part of this image. The image is called Peregrine on the Hunt by James Kennedy. 24 points, honorable mention. Per Lynn, good, clean, clear image with a complementary color scheme. The green leaves on the right separate nicely from the flower. The freshwater droplets really make this image good. Although I like it, it's somewhat cliche. The image is called Pink Rose with Droplets by Ron Werman. 24 points, honorable mention. Mari says, good lighting and great capture of movement. I would have added more space at the left of the frame. My eyes want to see a little more of what's at the top of the frame. This way it would give more information to the viewer of the environment. The image is called Race of the Swans by Dave Saboric, 21 points. Debbie says, beautiful colors in this flower. Sometimes yellows and reds are not handled well by our camera sensor, but the photographer did a great job holding back that intensity here. There's nice sharpness in the petals. My eye keeps wandering to the other flowers in the background, though. In order to make this a stronger image, the photographer may have chosen a flower with, a few dis with fewer distracting objects in the background or maybe approached this flower from a different angle. The image is called Red and Yellow Flower by Robert Boyle. 20 points. From Lynn, good reflection, which required you to be in just the right spot. I would darken the sky more, but not the mountain. Unusual clouds would bring this image to a whole different level. The image is called Reflections of Greatness by Debbie Leesky, 21 points. Mari says, good use of depth of field to highlight the rose. I would have chosen a different composition. Leave more space at the top of the frame and leave the brown part out of the frame. I would also fix the highlighted area at the bottom right of the rose and decrease the saturation of the top right corner. The image is called Rose by Angelie Persons, 16 points. Debbie says, this is such a strong, impactful image, and I was wowed when I first saw it. The muted color palette with the perfectly exposed white, the composition and the lines and textures all grabbed my attention and kept it. I wouldn't change a thing about this image. The image is called Salt, Salt Flats Death Valley by Bill Keaton. 25 points, third place. From Lynn, beautiful green magenta color scheme. It might be improved if it was a little darker overall, but your somewhat high key effect is still interesting. The image is called Shades of Purple by Robert Boyle, 20 points. Mari says, lovely back and side light. I would center the first duck. This way there would be more of the the traces of the second duck to the left of the frame. The image is called Strolling in the Park One Day by Fran Marino, 22 points. Debbie says, what an interesting subject. There are so many colors, textures, and lines. With a subject as complex as this one, my suggestion is to choose one part of it and experiment with compositions. If you get closer to, say, the green and pink part without all the textured leaves surrounding it, the resulting photo would be less complex, correction, complex, and more impactful. The image is called Time for Fall 
by Bonnie Luxo, 16 points. Lynn says, very nice. The birds are crisp and clear against a very soft background. Maybe burning all the edges would improve this image. Uh, the image is called Want to Share by Donna Schneider. 23 points, honorable mention. Mari says, beautiful composition. My eye travels smoothly from the flower to the heart-shaped leaf and the water droplets. The three leaves on top of each other adds more sophistication to the flower and to the photo overall. The image is called Water Lily in the Rain by Eddie Knipper. Uh, 23 points, honorable mention. Debbie says, oh goodness, what a sweet portrait of this beautiful duck. Every feather is tack sharp, and look how striking that eye is captured. The composition is really pleasing. The exposure is perfect. The impact is a wow. The image is called Wood Duck Sitting Pretty by Belinda Prince. 24 points, honorable mention. Lynn says, nice portrait. The backlighting is great here with good detail overall. Works perfectly against the dark background. The image is called Alpaca Sunshine by Susan Bestel. 25 points, third place. Mari says, nice red popping out and a good descriptive photo of nature's life. The top right corner of the photo is distracting, so I would crop that. The bug on the left side leaf is out of focus, so if shooting this photo again, a different use of the f-stop to be used. This way, everything is in focus, including the top left leaf that covers the tip of the fruit, if that is a fruit. Uh, the image is called Busy Beetles by Bonnie Luxo, 17 points. Perfectly timed image of either feeding time or conflict over food, Debbie says. In either case, the photographer was quick on the shutter to capture it. The composition of the birds on a diagonal branch is very pleasing. I suspect the photographer used the white vignetting to help lead the viewer's eye to the birds. In my opinion, it is a bit heavy and somewhat distracting to the beauty of the overall image. Perhaps next time, try a black vignette or even a very dark green to help guide the eye and create more drama. The image is called Dinner Time by Dale Cowan, 16 points. From Lynn, the lighting and timing is good here. The reflection creates two U-shaped elements that look like eloquent ice skaters. I would move the subject more to the right so the bird isn't flying out of the frame. The image is called Egret at Dusk by James Kennedy. 21 points. Mari says, beautiful, lovely light. The only minor thing I would change about this photo, I would crop a little from the bottom and the right side of the frame, just a tiny bit. Great photograph. The image is called Female Cardinal of Texas by Richard Schneider. 23 points, honorable mention. Debbie says, pretty top view of a flower. The photographer captured the soft lavender color so well, and the petals are nice and sharp. The harsh light on the grass in the background is unfortunate, though. To make this image more impactful, choose to photograph it in a different time of day when the sunlight is not directly overhead or when there is cloud cover to diffuse the uh, harsh light. The image is called Flower by Angeli Persons, 17 points. Lynn says, good clear focus on the bird. Interesting cyan orange colors that really caught my eye. Perhaps edge burning, especially the top and top left would improve this. The image is called Great Blue Heron by Mary Kay Tallarico, 21 points. 
Mari says, good composition and beautiful light. The crop to the right side makes me curious of what is out there. I would want to see the formations in the back more clear. Maybe an F-22 would have shown more detail. The image is called Lone Mesa Arch Vista by Lonnie Dittrick, 22 points. Debbie says, a very pretty image of a great blue heron. Nice composition and sharpness throughout. Every feather is full of detail. I wonder if this image could benefit from a tad bit more brightness. Perhaps a photographer could experiment to see if a bit more drama could be coaxed out of this image in post. The image is called One Last Gaze by Gary Wood. 20 points. Per from Lynn, perfect placement of the squirrel as well as good focus. It's almost a comical here's Johnny moment. The image is called Peanuts for Me by Joseph Miko. 22 points. Ari says, <clears throat> simply beautiful, in sharp focus, although with a soft background, great composition and balance of colors, well done. The image is called Splashy by Keith Marchand. 27 points, that's a perfect score, uh, first place. So normally if we were had the whole group here, uh, we would stop the meeting and present the uh, person that got the perfect score with a ribbon. Uh, unfortunately, Keith isn't here tonight, so we will make sure we get him his ribbon. So, This image screams classic beauty, Debbie says. The exposure is perfection with the soft colors of the flower jumping out of the darkness of the leaves and water. Compositionally and technically breathtaking, I wouldn't change a thing. The image is called Water Lily by Marge Brady. 24 points, honorable mention. Lynn comments, all the diagonals really make this image work. Overall, yellow through yellow-green colors are pleasing. I would burn down the left edge to keep the eye following the diagonals. Okay, this image is also called Water Lily by Eddie Kniffer. 23 points, honorable mention. Mari says, great soft colors and use of depth of field. I would add more space on top of the frame to add an even more accentuated feeling of freedom. The image is called We Have Liftoff by Debbie Leesky. 23 points, honorable mention. And that concludes the nature portion of our competition. So now we'll move to pictorial images. Debbie says, a lovely composition of this well-known hiking trail. Typically, uh, these, something's wrong here. Hang on a second. Bear with us. Oh, all right. Well, then we'll go ahead and zip through these. These are non-commented images. So, um, let me know where, let's see where we're at. Yeah, typically uh, with the competition, uh, we don't have the judges comment on all of them. So uh, I'm gonna run through the non-commented images and I will read the title of the image, the um, maker and the, the score. And when we get to the commented images, I'll let you know. All right, so this image is called Amish Girl and Child by Richard Ader, 21 points. This image is Amish in the Rain by Richard Ader, 25 points, third place. This image is called Bug-Eyed Grasshopper by Dan Hennessy, 19 points. This image is Canadian Falls by Joe DiStefano, 19 points. This image is Crowned Pigeon by Marge Brady, 
21 points. This image is called Daisy Portrait by Eddie Knifer, 19 points. This image is Dancing at Wade Circle by Susan Bestel, 20 points. This image is Desert Lake Bed by Jane Sidney, 20 points. This image, Does Anyone Want to Play by Debbie Leesky, 24 points, honorable mention. This image is Foggy Morning Fishing by Gary Wood, 24 points, honorable mention. This image is Hugo Has a Hat by Bill Keaton, 24 points, honorable mention. This image is called I Give You My Heart by Barb Cerrito, 25 points, third place. This image is In or Out by Gary Wood, 19 points. This image is Motorcycle Brigade by Angeli Persons, 17 points. This image is <clears throat> Mushroom Along the Flume by Richard Schneider, 22 points. This image is called Not For Me by Lonnie Dittrich, 21 points. This image is called Nutty Cracker by Barb Cerrito, 20 points. This image is called Old Bottles and Barn by Bonnie Luxo, 24 points, honorable mention. Uh, this image is called Old World Still Life by Jackie Sieski, 25 points, third place. This image is Presca Isle Boat by Mary Kay Tallarico, 22 points. <clears throat> this image is called Proud Foster Mom by Jackie Sieski, 27 points, another perfect score, first place. Um, this image is called The Cattle Corn Farm by James Kennedy, 17 points. This image is called Tunnel of Trees, Oak Hill Trail by, okay, it's listed as a non-comment, but you got the comment? Okay. All right, so we're going to comment on this one. No, there's two more that are non-comment, according to this. So go ahead. If you want to read this one, go ahead. Uh, Debbie says, a lovely composition of this well-known hiking trail. Typically composed from the exact center of the trail, the photographer stood a bit to the side, which gives a nice glimpse into the forest to the right. The light was very harsh, but interestingly, it created nice textures. The muted color palette also demands the attention of the viewer. <clears throat> this image is called Tunnel of Trees, Oak Hill Trail by Tish Hopkins, 17 points. Now, I have this as a non-comment image. So this is uh, called Water Flow by Joseph Miko, 23 points. And this is also a non-comment. Who Me by Dale Cowan, 21 points. And I think the rest should be comments. From Lynn, brilliant black and white, all tones rendered nicely. Two opposing expressions which gives this image room for interpretation. The image is called Bonded by Bill Keaton. So close, 26 points, second place. <clears throat> Mari says, great composition and light. The droplet to the right of the eagle's wing is a bit distracting. A fish in the eagle's claws would make this photo even better. But of course, Mother Nature is the boss. This image is called Coming At You by Dave Saboric. 24 points, honorable mention. 
Debbie says, wow, what a beautiful scene captured superbly. The exposure is so nice, right where it needs to be and under control in all the right places, too. The color in the water from the sky is gorgeous. The tall trees to the left frame the entire scene and provide a sense of size and space. I'd frame this and put it on the wall. This image is called Crater Lake Sunset by Donna Schneider. 21 points. Lynn comments, this is spectacular. I can feel the water and the droplets bring life to the otherwise dead black background. Her positioning diagonally across the image is perfect. This image is called Dancing in the Rain by Jackie Sieski. Once again, 27 points, first place, perfect score. I, I will say it's rare that we have perfect scores, and tonight we had three, so you can tell the quality of the photographs that were submitted. So congratulations to those that got perfect scores. All right, Mari says, good light and expression of the subject. The top left of the frame is a bit distractive. That looks like a person's half face. If this photo was meant to be a street photo, then it would need more content. Uh, the image is called uh, Girl with Umbrella by Richard Ader, 19 points. Debbie says another image of a popular hiking trail. This photo was taken under different light conditions than the last one. The depth of field is nice, as you can see. Great texture in the bark and the leaves down the trail. Great exposure with nice mid-tones and bright leaves. This image is called Into the Woods by Tish Hopkins. 20 points. From Lynn, perfect timing for the sunset and clouds. I like the light on the boardwalk. The image is cliche though, so if there's an additional element that could add to this, it would be improved. The image is called Let the Sun Shine In by Fran Marino, 19 points. Mari says, good composition and light coming from the windows. Not sure if this is a film photo or edited in such a way that it is grainy, especially at the bottom of the photo. A black and white would work well here with more added contrast. The image is called Living Room of the Past by Robert Boyle, 21 points. Debbie says, and the sign says keep out. I'm guessing the photographer didn't. The light coming in from the right side is just beautiful, allowing the viewer to take in all the textures, colors, lines, and shadows. Compositionally, the door is perfectly aligned with just the right amount of space to the top and left to keep the eye interested. Urban decay at its best and very well seen and photographed. The image is called Private by Jane Sidney, 22 points. Lynn says, interesting image. I'm not really sure what I'm seeing, which in a way is its charm. The main subject is sharp while the reflection is subdued. That keeps the eye on the sharp subject. The image is called Red Poinsettia Reflection by Gary Merrick, 18 points. Mari says, good details in this environmental photograph as the shadows of the construction leads the eye to the end of the hallway. I would keep the whole window in the frame or crop it out. This image is called Reformatory Cell Block by Vicki Wirt, 24 points, honorable mention. Debbie says, a pretty sky and a decrepit piece of heavy equipment sure makes for a unique juxtaposition. This is a complex image with so much to see. While I appreciate the entire scene, I can see so many other smaller scenes that might tell a story more succinctly and cleanly. But that doesn't take away from the unique perspective the photographer captured here. The image is called This Cat's Last Sunset by Bob Koleski, 20 points. From Lynn, great. 
Good colors, good focus, and more importantly, perfect timing for the dog's peaceful expression. Maybe he is tired of playing football or just taking a break. The image is called Top Dog by Barb Cerrito. 26 points, second place. Again, very close. Mari says, good lighting and feeling. I would crop the photo so the head at the bottom left is not distracting. The stage lights are a bit too bright. The image is called Trans-Siberian Orchestra by Eric Wethington, 23 points. Debbie says the intense blue hour colors in this image of St. Peter's Basilica in the Vatican, I think, are striking. Lovely image from an iconic viewpoint, well composed and beautifully exposed, so many rich details, all tack sharp. The image is called Vatican at Night by Joe DiStefano, 23 points. Lynn comments, lots of designs and textures going on here. I think the grainy texture adds to the authentic quality of the image. The lighting is uneven and overall there are too many details here. Some would call it busy. I would try to even out the lighting and perhaps neutralize the orange cast. The image would be better suited for black and white. The image is called Vintage Arcade Electronics by Dan Hennessy, 21 points. Mari says, great storytelling photo. The fog added to that. Good composition with the church not centered in the frame and the two trees leading towards the story. The image is called Wreaths at Lakeview with Fog by Ron Werman, 24 points, honorable mention. Nice rich colors abound in this image, Debbie says. The darker areas remind me of the rays of the sun and are nice leading lines to the Grand Prismatic Spring. Technically and compositionally, this image is very strong. The image is called Yellowstone Colors by Maria Diaconu, 22 points. And that concludes our competition for tonight. We want to thank all of our judges and uh, our readers. Appreciate uh, your efforts. And we want to thank all who entered tonight. Uh, we invite you to send us your feedback if you have any questions. Uh, comments or criticisms or constructive uh, thoughts, uh, send us your feedback at info at clevelandphoto.org. And again, that concludes tonight's event. If you want more information about competing or to join the Cleveland Photographic Society, you can visit our website, www.clevelandphoto.org, and uh, you can get all kinds of information about the club. So again, thanks to everyone. and. Uh, Next week is a Zoom members only Zoom meeting so you'll be you'll be getting the link uh, probably by Wednesday. Thank you. Good night.